oral appliances that is to keep upper airway op open medical therapy and surgical therapy treatment depends upon the severity of the sleep disorder breathing people with mild apnea have a wide variety of options people with moderate to severe apnea should be treated with nasal continuous positive airway pressure this is the first line treatment obesity is a major predictive factor for osa weight loss should be recommended to overweight patient with osa loss of body weight as little as 10% is associated with a clinically significant improvement that is nearly 26% in apnea apnea index long term effect of methods so weight reduction that is bariatric surgery and carbohydrate restricted diets are not assessed in longitudinal studies there are some case reports and observation studies are coming up the benefits of weight reduction are decreased respiratory disturbance index lowered blood pressure improved pulmonary function and arterial blood gas values improved sleep structure and snoring possible reduction of optimal cpap pressure required avoidance of alcohol for 4 to 6 hours prior to bedtime avoid using other sedatives not to cause apnea worse smoking cessation smoking increases the risk of snoring and apnea smoking sleeping on one side rather than on the stomach or bed that is already mentioned avoid sleep deprivation these are the lifestyle modifications there are three types of mechanical devices available for treatment one is continuous positive airway pressure this is the standard treatment of osa second one is bi level positive airway pressure third one is oral appliances see when you are treating the osa you should start from the least invasive and most effective method to the most invasive and effective the for least invasive you have to start first that is offer nasal cpap therapy first to all patients patients with mild to severe osa who refuse or reject nasal cpap therapy they can be offered bipap if bipap also fails or is rejected then you can recommend oral appliances oral appliances can be first line therapy in mild osa if they are unwilling to try cpap that means oral appliances cannot be tried in moderate and severe cases only in mild cases if they refuse cpap treatment attempt all intervention to improve tolerance to cpap before deciding it is failure so cpap may failure but you have to attempt all intervention to improve the compliance surgical options are offered only if non invasive medical therapy that is cpap bipap or is failed the for surgical therapy should not be given first these are the guidelines for cpap treatment cpap in continuous positive airway pressure that is like a pneumatic splint keep the airway open during inspiration expiration by a pressure fixed pressure uh, that i will come later on all patients with apnea apnea index greater than 15 are eligible for cpap that means moderate to severe cases are eligible for cpap regardless of symptomatology whether they have got symptoms or not moderate to severe cases of you are say should be prescribed cpap provided because this patient has got increased risk of cardiovascular morbidity cpap when there is a mild form of osa that is osa 5 to 14.9 this patient has one of the following symptoms that is excessive daytime sleepiness hypertension or cardiovascular disease you can prescribe cpap that is mild osa patient with symptoms we have to prescribe cpap moderate and severe patients even with they are not symptomatic to reduce the morbidity as you say you have to prescribe cpap treatment then how will you try to the cpap pressure because you are told that fixed pressure is given to the patient to keep the airway open during inspiration and expiration this is done by a polysomnography night study this pressure is titrated titration is usually done by trial and error method because there is no fixed way you can give that this is the pressure required need each patient you have to determine the pressure required for that patient by a tri trial error process adjusting the applied pressure until those respiratory and sleep parameters considered to be clinically important are reduced to the degree that to be acceptable therefore whatever the respiratory sleep parameters they are clinically important that should be reduced by the pressure what you are applying that was issued to be done at trial and error pressure method when after finding out the pressure that is the one prescribed to the patient for the treatment in the home what will the outcome of the cpap treatment optimal treatment of osa cpap correct so i say first first will be correct the obstruction then correct the upper airway resistance syndrome the last one is the snoring will be corrected not the snoring will be corrected first if snoring is corrected first in the cpap there is something wrong with the applied 
the pressure or if there is a sometime what will be happening is EPA there will be leak that leak will be detected as uh, noise in the polysomnogram that will be detected as snoring therefore you have to if snoring is corrected first you see part treatment you have to check your device and also find what is that if it is CPAP treatment so I say should correct first in the off if all the three problems are not eliminated then symptoms may recur therefore will be recurrence of the symptoms then I told the fixed CPAP what is the six CPAP we are told the fixed pressure will be applied to every day every hour to the patient continuously but the problem is it is a dynamic process therefore one fixed pressure may not be correct always therefore auto titrating positive air pressure is being developed fixed pressure CPAP therapy is effective in most patients by say however the application of a single pressure value over time has potential drawbacks because the collapsibility of upper airway varies not only during a single night but also long term therefore the night also it will vary so and long term also it varies there are a few prescribe a fixed pressure that will not be correct therefore auto titan paper advice in this device this modifies the applied pressure in real time according to that that is required to maintain the upper airway pressure it is in real time it adjusts the pressure what is required for keeping the airway open therefore this is auto titan paper in theory at any given time these devices apply the lowest effective pressure effectiveness of CPAP therapy is adequate levels of C nas this is nasal CPAP because it is better to give nasal because if you cover all the more it will be a problem Obst uh, it resolves obstructive apnea hypnopnea it improves the oxygen desaturation and snoring from sleep and this results in adequate sleep continuity and improves that time sleepiness mood cognitive function in people both mild and moderate uh, apnea CPAP has also been shown to decrease blood pressure I have shown that some of the studies have shown to go reduce blood pressure primarily in patients with severe OSA it improves left ventricular ejection fraction in patients with congestive heart failure and OSA CPAP plus antihypertensive modification may synergically improve systemic hypertension it improves right side heart function and pulmonary hypertension CPAP is associated with lower risk for heart disease stroke and diabetes CPAP has also been shown to increase quality of life decreases health care costs and reduces the mortality in OSA the pr main problem with CPAP therapy is the compliance see this CPAP has to be applied continuously to a patient during the whole time on a long term basis nobody is willing to use that is a mechanical device applied to the no, most of the patient during sleeping time therefore compliance is the big problem the use of CPAP for more than six hours decreases the sleepiness improves daily function restores memory up to normal levels our adherent to CPAP therapies what is the definition of adherent CPAP this is defined as CPAP therapy more than four hours nightly five to seven days a week therefore minimum four hours per day for five to seven days a week should be they are taking that one that is being defined as compliant to CPAP therapy 46 to 83 percent of patients with obstetric sleep apnea have been reported to be non-adherent to CPAP therefore non-adherence to treatment is a big problem in CPAP treatment then how will you improve the ad adherence to CPAP one is humidification you can humidify the airway there are some machine devices are available now bilabel CPAP is one see continuous CPAP power pressure is applied during fixed pressure during inspiration expiration being bilabel CPAP during the inspiration is more pressure experience less pressure therefore pressure will be varying both during inspiration expiration that is both uh, inspiration expiration then your top up CPAP or top up is developed to vary and optimize the level of CPAP throughout the night there's another one is flexible CPAP that is alternate the airway pressure between acceleration and inhalation on a breath to breath basis to improve the patient comfort these are the modalities that have been uh, designed for improving the adherence to CPAP therapy then there may be behavior intervention cognitive behavioral therapy that can also try to improve the compliance to the CPAP therapy now it is it is the latest publication so it is being developed some CPAP adherence tracking transmission system is being developed this uh, CPAP therapy is being done in the home see using the smart cards SD cards then memory system virus submission whatever the snoring whatever how many hours they are using it whether there is any leak in the system all will be recorded and can be recorded and we can find out whether the patient is individually is using the CPAP properly data that tract can be utilized for adherence leak efficacy and flow signal this is an uh, experimental stage and soon it will may we will get the results what are the complications of CPAP? There is a sense of suffocation, claustrophobia, 
difficulty exhaling, inability to sleep, musculoskeletal discomfort, aerophagia and sinus discomfort, very rarely pneumothorax and or pneumomediastinum. There will be noise and this may lead to spousal intolerance. Then when you prescribe the BIPA, what are the indicators? BIPA delivers a constant pressure during both inspiration and expiration. BIPA permits, permits independent adjustment of the pressure delivered during inspiration and expiration. BIPA is used in patients who cannot tolerate high CPAP pressures, who have barotrauma complication, just lung, uh, ear infection, bloating. If CPAP level needs to be increased above 15 centimeters, when higher CPAP pressure is required, then use BIPAP. It has no distinct advantage over CPAP. Therefore, CPAP is the first one. If there are some situations come, then you can use BIPAP. The next mechanical device is oral appliances. Patients with mild to moderate OSA who prefer OSA to CPAP. Sometimes if you prescribe CPAP, this mild to moderate patient may decline. Then you can prescribe the oral appliances who do not respond to CPAP therapy in whom treatment attempts with CPAP has failed. We refuse to treat or fail, they can be prescribed oral appliances. Should not be considered effective therapy for patients with severe OSA. In severe OSA patient, you should not prescribe oral appliances. Oral appliances uh, act by moving the tongue forward. Tongue is moving pulled forward, that means increasing the upper airway uh, 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 diameter or moving the mandible or soft valley anteriorly. Again, improving the upper airway diameter. These devices enlarge the posterior aspect. There are multiple different devices are available. There are three basic designs that are used to treat sleep problems. One is mandibular repositioners, that is it is anterior movement. Tongue retaining devices, again that will not fall backward. Palatal lifting device. These are the designs available as oral appliances. More than 40 Oral appliances are available to manage sleep related disorders and obstructive sleep apnea. There are some contraindications for oral appliances. When the teeth are less, patient unable to protrude the mandible forward and open the jaw widely, then you cannot apply it. Pre-existing temporal mandibular joint problem, you cannot apply. Severe bruxism, patient with full dentures. These are the contraindications for using oral appliances. There are some complications of our appliances. There will be excessive salivation, dental misalignment with bite change and tooth movement, temporomandibular joint disease, myofascial tooth pain, gum irritation, salivation, temporomandibular joint sounds, tongue pain. Patient may also object to having an appliance in their mouth throughout the night. Because there is an object put in the mouth, they may object that one. Now coming to the medical therapy, there are many pharmacologic agents. I have not already told about all these things in the morning, but I am going only to two things. One is endocrinological disorder. These are, these are, there are many drugs are available. None of them are proved to be useful in the treatment of OSA. Endocrine drug called the thyroid hormone replacement, myxedema. If you replace the, with the thyroxine, it will be a treatment in OSA or growth hormone suppressants. These are the indications for treatment. The next one is wake promoting agents. See modafinil. What is the role of modafinil in the treatment of OSA? See nowadays what is happening is when a patient comes OSA and excess at that time, most of the time, I'm not saying always, most of the time modafinil is prescribed. That is not correct. There are specific indications. See, despite treatment of CPAP, see you have to give CPAP treatment first in a OSA patient. If despite giving treatment, many patients demonstrate residual sleepiness. Optimal pressure is given. Even some patients, residual sleepiness will persist. Modafinil is a wake promoting agent which has been approved for treatment for narcolepsy. In a randomized double blind placebo controlled parallel trial, modafinil has been found to significantly improve daytime sleepiness, that, but it has no effect on apnea hypnopsy index. Adult patient OSA uh, having excessive somnolence despite well treated CPAP is indication. Therefore, modafinil in OSA should be prescribed only in those individuals who have been treated with CPAP. And despite treatment with CPAP, if they have got somnolence persisting, these are the individuals who should be given modafinil, not for every patient who diagnosed with OSA. Then coming to some other medical therapy, one is supplemental oxygen, that means there is hypoxemia. When there is a persisting hypoxemia, that is one of the problems for many organs, because every organ in the body requires oxygen. 
when this lack of oxygen, so many problems, of course, therefore oxygen therapy, supplemental oxygen therapy improves oxygen saturation level, but does not improve airway patency. Then therapy is in intended to improve nasal patency, because already talked in children that uh, nasal PSA improves OSA, coercion rhinite by benefit from use of nasal corticosteroids. Positional therapies, if you lie on supine position, tongue will fall back, therefore tell them to sleep on the side. There are some surgical treatment I just to go through. One is tracheostomy, because this is the one of the treatment modalities started initially when, but now it is not being practiced tracheostomy. But when there is a severe patient not controlled with any of these modalities, then hypoxia, persistent hypoxia, there may be some indication, some of the patient, not all the patient, tracheostomy. No, I did not talk selectomy, again in children. Procedures for nasal obstruction, septoplasty, nasal polypectomy, radiofrequency ablation of turbinates. I didn't have any other experience with surgical treatment. I am just uh, putting forward. Reduction of soft palate redundancy, that is willow palate of pharyngeoplasty, willow palate of flat, palate advancement, radio frequency, ablation of the soft palate. Reduction of the bulk of the tongue base to prevent hypopharyngeal or retropharyngeal obstruction, that is genioglossal advancement, higher suspension, partial glossectomy, tongue radio frequency ablation, lingulaplasty, maxillomandibular advancement. There may be some major procedures like epiglottic party and bariatric surgery at all, some very obvious patient, but even though it is not proved. Now coming to the recent advancement, one of the most important thing is, I have shown the genioglossus muscle, which is the one of the important muscle that keeps the upper airway caved in, and hypoglossal uh, 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 nerve is supplying that one. In a study of 30 middle-aged patients, do I say, who could not tolerate CPAP, Implantation of neurostimulator and respiration sensing lead in under genesis are done. This stimulating lead is placed on the hypoglossal nerve to stimulate the nerve during inspiration. Therefore, there will be contraction of the genioglossus muscle keeping the upper airway patent. Therefore, this is the one of the modalities being tried now. There will be progressive increase in inspiratory flow with increasing stimulation intensity producing opening of the airway. This is an experiment, again experimental study. This is one of the modalities being tried now. Now what I have mentioned is mainly CPAP is the most important treatment. There are three mechanical devices, CPAP, BiPAP, oral appliance. The first is CPAP, then phase via BiPAP. Oral appliance is last. In mild forms of OSA, if they are declining CPAP, give oral therapy. Surgical is the last one. And the, this is the latest one, hypoglossal nerve stimulation. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Uh